Moving on, the UP government has filed its counter affidavit in response to the plea filed by Jamia Dulama e Hind, which challenged the recent demolition of houses of those who had allegedly participated in protests in Prayagraj. UP government said that Prayagraj demolitions were carried out by local development authority and was a part of their endeavor to free the city of illegal and unauthorized constructions. The state government also said that the proceedings were initiated much before the violence which took place linked to the profit controversy. All right, for more on this, I'm joined by Nilashish on the broadcast. Nilashish, the Supreme Court was very clear last time. It asked the UP government to state its reasons why the demolitions were carried out. And today, the government has said that everything was done in accordance with the law. What is the latest that you can share with us? Well, yes, as you rightly pointed out, uh, the Supreme Court had issued notice and asked the UP government to respond uh, to uh, this uh, petition uh, by the Jamaat Ulema Hind, which had alleged that demolitions were selective actions, uh, which were in fact uh, targeting minority community protests uh, in relation to uh, remarks on the Prophet Muhammad. Now, what the state of Uttar Pradesh has said is that the demolitions that were carried out in UP were done by the local development authorities, and uh, those were autonomous of the state government. It was also stated that uh, the Jamaat has cherry-picked uh, two of these uh, demolition actions and has uh, um, given a malified color to uh, what was actually well within uh, the, uh, the eyes of the law. Now, as far as uh, the UP government is concerned, it, is, uh, it has stated very clearly that uh, these, uh, uh, these actions were taken in uh, as per the law and notices were issued well before any violence uh, had broken out. So the UP government uh, definitely uh, stands here. Uh, very similar, in fact, to, to what it had uh, stated orally uh, while the case was being heard. It was also stated that uh, no one who has been affected uh, by this particular uh, demolition act has uh, come before the court. And this is only uh, false propaganda being... Uh, being proper, being uh, spread by uh, the Jamaat through its, uh, its uh, petition. All right. Uh, thank you, Nilashish, uh, for those updates. Welcome back. Uh, let's get you the latest as far as the fight for Jaya's legacy is concerned. Uh, this is AIDMK's internal tussle over the single leadership issue. The Madras High Court has refused to restrain AIDMK General Counsel from amending parties' bylaws to enable single leadership in the party. The High Court said it is for the General Counsel and its members to decide and pass resolutions and that the court cannot interfere with the process. This comes just a day before the AIDMK General Counsel body meeting, which is set to happen tomorrow as per sources. Count of district secretaries backing Opanir Selvam has come down to six. Now 69 district secretaries are behind EPS. The single leadership issue is likely to become a big focal point in the meeting. While EPS camp is pushing for single leadership, the OPS camp apparently wants to maintain status quo. All right, for more on this, I'm joined by Dharani on the broadcast. Uh, Dharani, important day today which will seal the fate, which will decide the future of AIDMK leadership. What can we look forward to tomorrow? Uh, well, uh, in, uh, in what can be considered as a big setback for OPS, uh, the Madras High Court has just ordered that, that the General Council meeting of the AIDMK can happen as planned tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, no, by this order, uh, the General Council meeting will start by 10 a.m. tomorrow and it will go on till evening. Uh, so, this can definitely be considered as a big uh, setback for OPS because uh, the court has also refused to restrain the General Council from, uh, you know, amending the party's bylaws. So, uh, this particular line, uh, this can very well enable or pave way for the single leadership resolution to be brought up because uh, the court has told that it cannot interfere into the matters of resolution that are to be, you know, uh, you know brought up at the gen uh, General Council meeting. So, uh, tomorrow uh, and, and most uh, likely uh, the EPS come, they'll be, you know, bringing up a resolution for single leadership. 
leadership and since office uh, since aps is already enjoying uh, the majority support within the party among district secretaries and general council members it's it's most likely to be passed also so uh, tomorrow we might see uh, admk moving towards single leadership finally after 10 days of tussle between aps and ops uh, so as i told this can be considered as a, a big uh, you know a setback for ops and right now ops is conducting meetings with uh, you know some of the, some of his supporters at his uh, residence at the greenways road here in chennai so his supporters who are uh, right now at the eps residence include manoj pandey and vaidhi lingam jayshree prabhakar and others so as as you told only six district secretaries right now are uh, backing ops there is 69 people there backing eps so uh, if at all if resolution is uh, you know being brought up Uh, tomorrow for single leadership uh, eps is very likely you know to succeed in that so meanwhile you know the madras i could as i told it has uh, you know a paved way for the general council meeting to happen in fact i'm quoting the order for you the court has told that and i quote uh, it is for the general council and its members to decide and pass resolutions and this court cannot interfere with the process of conducting the general council meeting uh, therefore this court is not inclined to pass any interim orders or directions except making it clear that the general council meeting which is scheduled to be held tomorrow or shall go on so this is what the madras uh, high court has to say on this uh, uh, you know uh, on the four petitions that were filed in front of it um, that that were here today so we'll have to look forward to what's going to happen tomorrow uh, many interesting turn, you know turns of events it might happen tomorrow and we'll have to look forward to all of them all right uh, thank you dharani for those updates Moving on, the Enforcement Directorate has received Congress's request to defer Congress President Sonia Gandhi's summons for tomorrow. The Enforcement Directorate has accepted the request of uh, Sonia Gandhi to defer her questioning in connection with the National Herald case. She was to be questioned tomorrow as the ED has accepted her request now. She will be given a new date to get her statement recorded. Remember, her son and Congress MP Rahul Gandhi Gandhi uh, was uh, also questioned for five days uh, uh, in this case, and Sonia Gandhi was to appear before the ED tomorrow. But now she has been given some time. Uh, Ranjita joins us for more on this. Uh, Ranjita, एक राहत है Sonia Gandhi जी के लिए जिन्होंने वक्त मांगा था enforcement directorate से ये बोलते हुए कि COVID के बाद उनको complete recovery के लिए थोड़ा समय चाहिए. तो क्या हमें पता है कि अगली तारीख कब है जब Sonia Gandhi ED के summons को जवाब देंगे? देखिए सोनिया गांधी कोरोना पॉजिटिव हुई थी और जिसके बाद जब उनकी उनका स्वास्थ्य जो है बिगड़ा था उसके बाद गंगाराम अस्पताल वो भर्ती हुई थी उसके बाद जब कल डिस्चार्ज होकर वो पहुंची है उस समय से ही ये खबरें निकल कर आ रही थी कि क्या तेईस को जो नेशनल हेल्थ मामले में उनसे पूछताछ की बात कही गई है उन्हें ईडी दफ्तर जाना है तो क्या वो ईडी दफ्तर जाएंगी या नहीं आज कम्युनिकेशन विभाग के महासचिव जयराम रमेश ने ट्वीट करके ये जानकारी दी कि सोनिया गांधी ने ईडी से कुछ और समय मांगा है ईडी ऑफिस जाने के लिए और उन्होंने इस बात का हवाला दिया कि कोरोना से अस्पताल से छुट्टी होने के बाद उन्हें पूरी तरह से रिकवर होने के लिए कुछ वक्त चाहिए और उसके लिए उन्होंने समय मांगा है हालांकि अब तक ये चीज निकलकर सामने नहीं आई है कि अगला समन उन्हें कब किया जाएगा और कब वो ईडी दफ्तर जाएंगी लेकिन ये माना जाए कि कोरोना संक्रमित होने के बाद जो अपील उन्होंने ईडी दफ्तर से की है जो रिक्वेस्ट उन्होंने डाली है उसका संज्ञान लेते हुए उन्हें आगे की तारीख निश्चित तौर पर मिलेगी जी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया रंजीता जानकारी के लिए Ruling BJP JJP combined has won control over 25 of the 46 municipal bodies for which the elections were held in Haryana. The elections for the president's post in 18 municipal corporations and 28 municipal committees in the state were held on Sunday. A senior official of the state election commission has said that the BJP has won 22 seats, JJP 3, Aam Aadmi Party 1, INLD 1, while independents have won 19. All right for more on this I'm joined by Gurpreet on the broadcast uh, Gurpreet uh, what we have seen is uh, that BJP has won big in these uh, civic polls but as uh, we are a channel that talks about people's issues for the benefit of our viewers if you could take us through the final tally and the key issues of people in Haryana Well uh, if we can talk about this uh, local bodies election we have seen BJP is able to take over all the seats uh, and maximum seats they are able to win but uh, uh there is only one fallout with which we have seen a uh, karnal constituency we have seen that bjp was not able to win um important seats from there because that uh, 
constituency belongs to the chief minister of Haryana ML Qatar and if they are not able to perform much better there that is the uh, only critical fallout but if we can talk about the overall situation in uh, Haryana we have seen BJP JJP alliance uh, they are able to take over the maximum seats uh, uh, from this local bodies uh, uh, local bodies elections specifically if we can talk about the issues it seems that uh, BJP is able to uh, win the heart of the people of uh, Haryana and that was one of the major reason why they are able to get but uh, at the same time if we can talk about the political opponent specifically Aam Aadmi Party even Aam Aadmi Party is able to uh, win one seat that means it was able to open its uh, its account in Kurukshetra right. specifically in Haryana that means the uh, Aam Aadmi Party is also trying to make it uh, grassroots networking but it has only one seat so that's why the bjp leaders say that there is less impact at the same time we have seen even the prime minister uh, narendra modi he has already congratulated haryana for uh, getting this landslide victory and the way they have performed so it seems that there is less anti incumbency in haryana and that was one of the major reason they are able to win the uh, win the elections uh, from the maximum seats at the same time uh, what we have, we can understand at this point of time this is the grassroots networking which the bjp is able to make in the states uh, that will definitely benefit the bjp at the vidhan sabha elections as well as in the lok sabha elections all right uh, thank you gurpreet for those updates we are getting some breaking inputs from maharashtra All right, uh, we're getting live visuals uh, from Mumbai and uh, the luggage, the suitcases that you see here belong to Mr. Uddhav Thakre. His belongings are being moved out from Varsha Bangalore, which is the official residence of uh, the Chief Minister of Maharashtra. Ketan joins us for more. Uh, Ketan, uh, these are symbolic pictures. They mean a lot for anyone to be in power, to leave their chair or to leave their official residence. Uh, and as Mr. Thakre has said in his address that he is going to leave the official address, uh, official residence of Varsha Bangalore and move uh, to his uh, personal residence with his Matoshri. Uh, what is the latest that you can share with us? Uh, no one saw this coming so soon. Call me, call me. All right, uh, we'll try and uh, get in touch with Ketan on this big update. The visuals on your screens are of uh, uh, Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre's residence where his belongings are being moved out. Remember, in an emotional appeal uh, this evening, he had told uh, people that he's going to leave Varsha Bangalore and move to his personal residence. He said he was pained and hurt by the betrayal that his own people chose to do this to him. He said that if any rebel MLA comes to him directly and tells him, then he will quit. He also asked people if he was incapable of leading the Shiv Sena. So the visuals on your screens are very dramatic visuals. Uh, in the world of politics, these uh, pictures can mean a lot. Uh, Ketan joins us for more. Uh, Ketan, as we see those uh, suitcases uh, belonging to Mr. Uddhav Thakre being moved, uh, these pictures define what is happening in Maharashtra at the moment. And as Mr. Thakre had said in his address that he is going to be moving from Varsha to Matoshri, what is the significance of this development? Well, Archana, I couldn't hear you clearly, uh, but uh, I got the gist of it. So, um, Shiv Sena is a party of emotions. Shiv Sena is a party of the common uh, a party worker, uh, the Shiv Sainiks. And as you can see, uh, there is a, a movement. Uh, I, and uh, you can see that people who had come to meet uh, CM Uddhav Thakre, they are, uh, they are leaving now. And a while ago, you saw that two large suitcases being moved away from Varsha, which is the official uh, residence of uh, Chief Minister. As you can see, there is huge bandobast here. And, and, 
and on the other side, uh, if I can uh, slightly pan the camera, I mean, there are Shiv Sainiks, hordes and hordes of them, shouting slogans, supporting their leader, uh, expressing their solidarity with the Thakre family. Amidst all this rebellion, it is this this uh, power of Shiv Sainik that keeps the party strong. If you look at the party's history of the last three decades, there have been stalwarts like Raj Thakre, Narayan Rane, Chagan Bujbal, who have quit the party, left the party. But this is the magic of uh, the politics of cadre based party it's the cadre that keeps the party going and uddhav knows uddhav knows the magic of optics and uh, in a fervent appeal in an emotional appeal he said that he's, he doesn't care for power he is going to leave his official residence and move to his personal residence matoshri which has a direct emotional connect with the late balasaheb thakre and the founder of uh, shiv sena so clearly he is expected any moment his his um, his luggage has luggage has already shifted out so tomorrow one can see a lot of emotion a lot of uh, uh, raw strength of the shiv seniks on the street regardless of what happens at in the, on the floor of the house regardless whether eknath shinde gets the magic number of 37 gets recognition as a rebel group on the floor of the house and forms a government with bjp or if the mlas come a part of those mlas uh, rebel mlas come back to the sena camp whatever happens on the street uddhav knows his target audience well he has appealed in a very emotional way directly to the shiv seniks where the shiv sena as a party as a unit earns its strength from and this is what we are seeing on the ground arjuna absolutely and ketan what is happening in mumbai is very important and it's as important as what is happening in guwahati now what has happened is that four more MLAs have joined Eknath Shinde's camp, which means that Shinde is getting stronger. His flock is getting stronger, uh, whereas uh, Mr. Uddhav Thakre is packing up and leaving his re residence in a symbolic move. So what is playing out in Guwahati is going to have some very, very serious consequences, serious ramifications, and it also will determine who will occupy Varsha Bungalow next. All right, uh, since uh, this is live television and dynamic developments are unfolding by the second, we'll try and fix that link with Ketan. But look at these visuals. How often do you see uh, the luggage of a chief minister and a chief minister of such a big state like Maharashtra being moved out from their official residence while they are serving? Uh, because what happened today is this evening, Mr. Uddhav Thakre made an impassioned appeal. It was an emotional appeal. He reached out to his card. All right, Ketan is back with us. Uh, Ketan, I wanted to ask you something that uh, what is unfolding in Mumbai is as important as what is happening in Guwahati. Now, in Guwahati, four more MLAs have joined Mr. Eknath Shinde's camp, which means Mr. Shinde's flock is getting stronger, his numbers are getting better, uh, whereas in Mumbai, the pictures that are emerging is that the chief minister is packing up his bags and leaving to his personal residence. These optics mean a lot, but Guwahati, the situation in Guwahati is changing by the hour. Well, Arjuna, yes, but we shouldn't draw a simplistic conclusion. As I told you, Shiv Sena is a cadre-based party, uh, and uh, the larger message, the emotional message, like it, it resonated in case of Sonia Gandhi uh, a few years ago when she decided not to take up uh, the prime minister's post. So you are seeing a state, uh, 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 state version of this whole thing playing. Uh, Shiv Sena gives great importance to Tyag, and this is Uddhav Thakre's own version of uh, Tyag or renunciation of sorts where he is he's making a, 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 a symbolic uh, protest uh, he's 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 emotional he was uh, uh, soft he was direct at the same time the message that he wanted to convey to Shiv Senix all across Maharashtra were very much clear that he is not someone who's vying for power 
today uh, the people uh, or the rebels who are criticizing his style of leadership it's the same leaders who enjoyed the fruits of power for the last uh, 10 years uh, 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 bala sahab thakre passed away in 2012 uh, uddhav thakre has taken the reins of the party in 2014 on its own it won some 63 64 mlas um, in in vidhan sabha so he's pointing uh, uh, the fingers at the rebels and saying that if they indeed feel that he is a failure then they should come and speak to him up front and not uh, uh, go to surat or go to guwahati and 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 speak from there so clearly uh, this emotion and this uh, fervent appeal uh, done through facebook uh, social media in a direct address uh, speaking in his typical uh, uh, family elder kind of uh, style he is he is unlike his father he is he is more of a of a uh, of a soft uh, talker but uh, as you can see here the visuals are playing out and tomorrow one can see a, a, a lot of shiv sainiks gathering uh, to support him at mathoshri mathoshri has a kind of a historical place in the uh, politics of maharashtra so it is uh, is it, it is the residence of the sena patriarch uh, bala sahab thakre who founded uh, the sena and and now he is he is moving to his old house so on paper he hasn't resigned on paper he hasn't put down papers so basically you shouldn't read this as uthav putting down his weapons yet or uthav uh, uh, bending in front of uh, the the rebel mlas uh, ever burgeoning number mm-hmm. so it should be seen in fact as he uh, at, uh, attracting his target audience he speaking to the shiv sainiks directly and showing what is renunciation what the optics are and uh, whether mla stay or do- doesn't stay uthav is going to be at the helms of the party affairs and it's these common sainiks who are going to stand by him that's the message that uddhav thakre wants right. to deliver right uh, ketan please stay on with us abhishek is joining us from guwahati uh, abhishek as ketan was saying that uh, the suitcase is being moved out from varsha bungalow is a message it is symbolic and carries a lot of weight as far as shiv sena scarder is concerned but let's not ignore what is happening in guwahati because what is happening in guwahati is is has the potential of changing uh, the game completely in mumbai what we believe is that four more mlas have joined mr shinde's camp which means that in terms of numbers he has gained some strength for the benefit of our viewers could you give us the latest update as far as uh, the number of mlas that are with uh, mr eknath shinde and those who are with mr uddhav thakre yes again these are claims versus counter claims as we spoke in the uh... we spoke in the afternoon also uh, when we spoke uh, particularly exclusively with uh, times network spoke to eknath shinde where he said that he currently has 46 mlas with us and uh, including independent and sena mlas and what we broke the news that there are four more coming uh, in the evening and we have two of shiv sena and two of independent out of the two one is gulab rao patel and he is also one of the minister in mahavikas agadi government who was until yesterday with mr uddhav thakre and today since morning he was not reachable and we broke the news also and he is now joined the shinde camp and as we speak the claims being made by the shinde camp has reached 50 mla out of which there are seven sitting ministers of the mahavikas agadi government from the sena camp so definitely is a big big bolt to the uddhav thakre camp and what we are coming to know from the sources that uddhav thakre is left with around 10 to 12 mlas with them and that too what we are coming to know are also in you know connection are speaking over the phone with ekna shinde so definitely uh, the confidence of mr Sh- mr shinde is rising and as we speak mlas are coming and what is more expected is you know tomorrow might more mlas are expected to join him so definitely he is in a better position as of now and definitely as we speak the mba government if we you know take a floor test right now they will be in minority and the government might fall so definitely uh, uh, shinde is in a better position and after the emotional appeal the tweet with which uh, mr shinde has put out clearly sends a stern message to the leadership mr uddhav thakre that 
no more compromise on Hindutva. We are firm on our stand and we will definitely go ahead. And Mahavika Sagadi has faced only Shiv Sena and Shiv Sainik were faced in this coalition. Mm -hmm. Though NCP and Congress have benefited out of it and it is now the right time to move out and it is a need of Maharashtra to do so. He clearly mentioned in the tweet and, you know, giving a stern message that he is not returning back and also claiming that the original Shiv Sena is with him. Right. Back to you. Right. Abhishek, uh, when we last uh, spoke, you said that everything is very guarded. Nobody is allowed to enter. All right. Before uh, we uh, get... All right. These are live visuals uh, coming in from Mumbai. These are uh, Varsha bungalows, outside of Varsha bungalows, uh, which is uh, Maharashtra Chief Minister's official residence. Uh, the latest update is uh, that the belongings of uh, Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre are being moved from Varsha to his personal residence, Matoshri, uh, because he had said this in his address this evening, where he addressed... It was an impassioned, a very, very emotional address, where he said that he's hurt and pained uh, by what the rebel MLAs have have done. He said that if rebel, rebel MLAs want him to quit, he will, but they have to say this to him up front. They have to tell him directly uh, and that he will also leave uh, his official residence and move to his personal residence. It's being seen as a very symbolic move, keeping in mind uh, the emotional quotient of the Shiv Sena Kader. So these are the live visuals uh, from outside uh, Mr. Uddhav Thakre's uh, residence uh, after his belongings were moved uh, from Varsha to Matoshri. All right, uh, Ketan is uh, joining us on this. Uh, Ketan, uh, we are uh, watching these live uh, visuals uh, from outside uh, CM's residence. Uh, what is the latest? We understand that his belongings are being moved to Matoshri, which is his personal residence. Uh, and uh, he had mentioned about leaving Varsha in the evening as well. Uh, has he also moved or is he planning uh, to wait and watch as to what happens in Guwahati this night? Yeah, so uh, the CM is leaving uh, his residence as promised. As you can see in my visuals, please uh, cut, cut live to me. All right. Uh, as you can see that uh, the CM, CM's cavalcade is ready to move. He will move to Matoshri any time. And, and as, as you can see, his cavalcade is ready. In the evening, he made an emotion, fervent appeal. And he said that he doesn't vie for power. And he is willing to move to his personal residence. He is going to leave his official residence. And he was pained. Uh, one could see that he was hurt by his own flock uh, leaving him. And uh, he has has kind of kept his promise and he as you can see that the CM's pilot vehicles are all queued up all lined up and he can leave in front of us anytime soon and he he has kept his word that he gave to the Shiv Senics and now as you can see that the CM uh, uh, CM uh, is, is leaving and uh, uh, and his pilots are being readied All right, uh, Ketan, so these are uh, dramatic visuals after that very, very dramatic development uh, which uh, Udav Thakre had announced in his address that he's going to leave the official residence, which is Varsha Bangalore, and move to his personal residence. It means a lot in the See world that of... The CM was seated in, the, in his Mercedes and he was in the backdrop. Cut, 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 wire cut, wire. It is official residence. So we are talking about Varsha Baglo, which is the Maharashtra Chief Minister's official Baglo. So this evening, when Mr. Udav Thakri addressed uh, people, uh, he said that he is going to leave Varsha Baglo and move to his personal residence, Mato Shri. Uh, another significant fact that emerged from his uh, address was that he said that I am pained and hurt by what the rebel MLAs have done. He said that I am ready to quit. If the rebel MLAs tell this thing to me directly up front, uh, I'm ready to quit. I never wanted to be in power and I never lusted for power. Uh, so now uh, Mr. Uddhav Thakre practicing what he, what, he, what he exactly said this evening, uh, leaving the Varsha bungalow with his belongings. And as Ketan was saying, it, it could have a lot of ramifications because this is a very, very symbolic move of carries a lot of weight and gravitas for the Shiv Sena cadre. Uh, remember their chief 
uh, the chief minister and their party chief leaving uh, the official bungalow, uh, but in no way should it be read as giving up. It is a very symbolic gesture, dramatic developments coming in from outside chief minister's residence, Mr. Uddhav Thakre leaving Varsha bungalow. Shiv Sena workers have also gathered there. They are uh, raising slogans uh, in order to support their leader. And these are the pictures of Mr. Uddhav Thakre uh, leaving uh, his official residence, Varsha Banglo, which is the chief minister's residence that belongs to the chief minister. But he is now moving to his personal residence, which is Matoshri. Uh, an announcement on similar lines was made by the chief minister himself this evening he's uh, packed his bags and left the chief minister's residence which by the way uh, could mean a lot of things but uh, we will wait for the official confirmation there but in terms of what is unfolding in Guwahati is that the flock of Mr. Ek Eknath Shinde is growing stronger the numbers on his side as per his claims remember nothing is official it is just claims versus claims so Mr. Ekhtar Shinde is claiming that he has the numbers with him. But what Mr. Uddhav Thakre, the Chief Minister of Maharashtra, said in his address this evening cannot be ignored. He said that uh, he's pained and hurt by what the rebel MLAs are doing. He said that Hindutva is core to Shiv Sena's ideology. It is the bedrock of Shiv Sena's functioning. It is the bedrock of Shiv Sena's politics and that Shiv Sena and Hidutva are inseparable. And during the same address, Mr. Uddhav Thakre had said that uh, he is going to leave the official Banglo Varsha and move to his personal residence, Mato Shri, which is in Mumbai as well. And uh, remember, uh, these are the live pictures that we are getting from outside Chief Minister's residence, where uh, Uddhav Thakre is leaving his residence uh, that uh, happened, that was triggered by a rebellion by senior cabinet member Egnath Shinde. And uh, that sort of raised several question marks on the stability of the Maharashtra government. However, uh, the latest update and the facts that we are getting for you is there uh, Mr. Uddhav Thakre uh, greeting his fans and uh, leaving uh, his official residence for his personal residence, Matoshri. Uh, dramatic developments uh, triggered by a banner of revolt raised by his own party member, by his own minister, Eknath Shinde, who is now camping in Guwahati with the seven other rebel MLAs. And uh, there you can uh, sense uh, the kind of uh, sentiment that prevails on ground. It's a mix of chaos, it's a mix of emotions. Shiv Sena workers are raising slogans there to support their leader who's leaving his official residence for his personal residence. Uh, remember earlier today, Uddhav Thakre stopped short of announcing his resignation, said he's ready to quit. His resignation is uh, ready, his letter is ready, but someone from the rebel camp has to come to him and tell him directly that he must quit. And he also asked whether he's incapable to lead the Shiv Sera. It was a very emotional address. He said that he was pained and hurt by what is happening in the state of Maharashtra. He said that uh, going away uh, and uh, camping in a hotel is not a good thing. He also said that he's someone who did not want to be in power in the first place. He was urged by others to become the chief minister. He mentioned Mr. Sharad Pawar, who said that Udhav is a, a good name to take the responsibility. He said he never lusted for power. He wanted to just carry forward Bal Thakre's ideals, according to him. He said that Hindutva and Shiv Sena are inseparable. Hindutva is an integral part, is, is an integral and inseparable part of Shiv Sena's politics, Shiv Sena's ideology, and the visuals on your screens are... Right now, my, my cameraman has uh, gone ahead and I just witnessed next to me the complete Thakre family, uh, Uddhav Thakre, uh, CM Uddhav Thakre was seated in his Mercedes. Uh, and uh, behind that, there was an SUV where uh, 
Uddhav Thakre, CM Uddhav Thakre's wife, Rashmi Thakre, his son and minister Aditya Thakre, and his another son, Tejas Thakre, all were seated. The chief senics on the road were welcoming them, were shouting, shouting slogans to express their support. And there was a lot of, as I'm seeing, there are a lot of supporters' vehicles that are following them all the way till Matoshri, which is the official residence of the Thakres. Uh, as you can see that in the evening, Uttar Thakre has made an emotional and a fervent appeal, in which he has said that he is deeply hurt by the betrayal of his own party members, whom he considers as family. And he is so hurt that he doesn't vie for power, and he's ready to resign if need be. And he also added that uh, uh, that in the evening he's, he's going to leave his official residence, which is uh, this picturesque uh, bungalow in Malabar Hill, and go to his private residence, which is Matoshri. Again, Matoshri has a lot of emotional appeal for the Shil Sainik because it is the residence of their erstwhile founder, uh, Balata Thakre, who founded uh, this uh, regional party and converted into the political behemoth that it, it, it is now. So as you can see, the visuals are playing themselves out. You can see in a unique display of solidarity with the common Shilsenik and disregarding the rebellion and saying the, the, and uh, appealing the, the rebel to, to face him uh, and, 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 and tell, them, uh, tell him their vote. Uddhav Bhakri has kept his word and he has left his official residence and this is indeed an important uh, political visual. This is an indeed an important step and uh, it, which will play out in this Maharashtra government crisis. Tomorrow one can see uh, one would see a lot of Shiv Sainik gathering uh, around Matoshri the same way they used to gather uh, when, when Bala Saab used to yes. make appeal to them. So uh, uh, clearly, Uddhav Thakre knows where his target audience lies. It is the common Shiv Sainik that are his target audience. Uh, he knows the history of his own party. He knows the fact that in the last three decades, the party has seen many All right, Ketan, yes. stalwart leaders. Yes, Ketan, thank you so much for those updates. I apologize, we've completely run out of time on this broadcast, uh, but these are the dramatic visuals uh, that we are getting from outside CM's residence. Uh, Mr. Udav Thakre has left Varsha Bungalow for his personal residence, Mato Shri. Remember, he had made this announcement during his address in this evening, and uh, uh, this is the latest update. And as Ketan was saying, this holds a lot of weight and gravitas for the Shiv Sena cadre. We'll have to wait and watch what these visuals eventually translate into. Too. With that, it's a wrap on the broadcast. Stay tuned to Mirror Now. My colleague Tamanna Namdar joins next on the show.